Okay, so I'm posting this up because this backs up the L.S. Dvorkin study that I posted earlier. Now, before I get to any of the stuff, I'm not going to talk about this as I go through it with the camera. I'm going to post high-quality photos, and then I'll talk about what's relevant there. This was put out by USA Gym Gymnastics back in 2008, and it's just a general guidance for strength coaches and gymnastics coaches as to what kind of fundamentals go into developing a strength program. And a lot of the various theories that are still relevant to this day. So I'll just kind of skim through the pages a little bit. Talks about ATP, energy systems, and it also shows this study here which I'm going to talk about which is basically three types of training methods that were compared which eventually shows that the L.S. Dvorkin study was right. These 70 percent wound up producing the best results. That was the size principle there. Gets on to some further stuff here. Like I said, I'm just skimming through this. I'll post better quality photos and talk about it in a little bit more detail. And that's it. If you can find this study, look it up. It's a great starting reference for anybody who wants to build a foundation. Okay, so let's take a look at how they trained. The first group, you have a max strength group. This group trained at 90 plus percent of their one rep max. So this is something that you would use to more or less peak for maximum strength in terms of a periodization scheme. Group number two is a typical bodybuilding type routine. They trained at 70% of their one rep max to failure for roughly three sets of 12 reps. Now we move on to the final group which is the power group. This group was designed to move the bar fast at a low percentage of their one rep max therefore increasing or maximizing the total amount of power that they would create in their work sets. Now moving on to the results, you can clearly see that the REF group gained the most amount in terms of newtons of isometric force. In addition, they gained 20.7% increase in their amount of force that they could create, which is the highest of the bunch. What else is not shown is a calculation that I did on my own that shows that the REF group gained approximately 9.5% over the max strength group in terms of the amount of newtons of force that they could create isometrically. That's nearly a 10% gain or difference over the competition in terms of an event. That's pretty significant to gain 10% over one of your competitors. Moving on to muscle mass gain or cross-sectional area, it's once again shown that the REF group which trained at 70% blows away the competition gaining nearly twice as much cross-sectional area. That it's expected that that group would gain more cross-sectional area, but by that margin is astounding, to be quite honest, especially even over the power group. Pa training at maximum power usually has pretty good hypertrophic or hypertrophic gains, however you like to pronounce that word, but this is beyond substantial. So if you're trying to look good, obviously training at like bodybuilding style workouts is uh, has its advantages. Okay, so to finish up this video, I think it's pretty safe to say that training at 70 to 80 percent of your one rep max is a very effective way to build a strength and conditioning foundation. Um, you build good amount of muscle, superior hypertrophy response, hypertrophy response, however you want to say that word. And the very interesting thing about the 70 percent group in this particular study was that they gained the most amount of strength and the most amount of muscle in the least amount of time. They spent less time in the gym, less total sets, less rest between sets and they were in and out of there and they basically made the best gains. I, I mean you can't really ask for a whole lot more and I've made good results training this way. I probably have achieved my my best results chain, uh, training this way uh, my whole life and I'm just kind of I guess I made this video a bit not only to shed some light on the truth about strength and conditioning programs and, and programming methods and the foundations of programming methods because periodization is a whole other story but I did this to kind of remind myself of maybe how I should be training in order to get back to the results that I used to have and maybe break some barriers because I've been struggling recently. You know, a bit with injuries, a bit with programming wrong, and just a bit of laziness too. So you combine all that and you don't get very far. So anyways, I hope this was useful to a lot of people. Uh, I don't make any money on my channel. I don't sell t-shirts. I don't sell anything. I'm just throwing out some truth out there. Hopefully this helps people beyond myself. Um, have a good weekend. Have a good Sunday. Peace.